a dent in the FA. And the other thing to note with Tempo Storm is they wanted a reset. They needed a reset with BFA. They have it now, and Min Poike is going to be able to play his best healer. And Alec is going to be able to be one of the minds leading the charge, creating some of these new compositions. Let's see if they can get the upper hand on XRB to the moon. All right, Tempo Storm kind of pioneering the Warrior Mage Druid as the first team to really showcase it in battle for Azeroth. It focuses on the Mage controlling the entire team while the Warrior just tries to smash everybody to pieces. And the rest of Druid, of course, backing them up and keeping them alive. Against a melee cleave, I think it is super effective as a Frost Mage. You just get double value having your snares on two classes that have to be in melee range. Nixie, though, will be the primary target likely for the melee cleave as he is less likely to try and run away. He also wants to attack back as well. Nice cycle at low health by Looney, holding Nixie in place. Nixie actually just leaping back on top of Z-Pi. I'm curious what Z-Pi is really doing over here. It's interesting that he's running him in Poike. Yeah, I think it's a good way to just tax him in Poike's mana. So Blizzo, he's playing no. So not only does he have Escape Artist, he has Bladestorm and Avatar to get out of the roots that Alec is going to be providing. So I think just being on Alec, slowing him down a little bit, then making swaps, really just taxing him in Poike's mana. I think XRB to the moon, I mean, they've been known to play the long game before, and that could be part of the tactic that they're implementing now. All right, good damage on Z-Pi at the moment. Looney's having to spend a lot of mana early on to heal through this. I almost would have liked to see him time his innervate for that. And there we had the first Veiled Eye proc onto Z-Pi right there. So we know that he's going to be playing that tank trinket. Uh, I'm curious to see if Alec is doing what he was doing in the previous matchup against Daily Feed, where he was playing the regular orb instead of that concentrated coolness. Uh, we're going to have to wait and see the next time he launches out that orb. Um, Another thing that's really interesting about this matchup is that we're finally going to get the Mimpoike versus Lunium showdown on those Resto Druids. I know I'm super excited to see who's going to come out ahead out of these two Druids. Another thing that Zipai just running at Minpoike does is it really impacts the ability Minpoike has to sit down and get drinks. Whereas Looney, he's going to be able to go sneak off for drinks basically the whole game. You can see, Looney's full mana, Minpoike is already down to around 70%. And if this game goes long, if it gets into dampening, it's just going to favor, uh, I believe, Looney even more. Uh, I mean, he's going to overextend like we just saw. He'll get Bash Cyclone, Frost Nova, and Poly, 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 Poly out of line of sight of Looney. And I mean, that's a long time to not be attacking anything, so it is a risk for Z-Pi to do it, as well as Nixie punishing him as, as this position. z is trying to chase down Minpoike. He line sights Looney. Nixie gets a ton of damage as a result. Looney actually jumping in to try and save Z-Pi. It's going to allow him to save him. Maybe Nixie even switches to Looney in this position. Doesn't look like he's very interested in that at all, though. Blizzo is actually going to be tag-teaming out for Z-Pi, trying to go after Minpoike, using that uh, avatar to break out of the root and stay on target. It seems like Z-Pi and Blizzo are constantly splitting, bouncing between targets, and trying to tax as much mana as possible from Minpoike. Yeah. And there's another Veil die right there onto Nixie. Um, what? Look at that fear. Minpoike stuck in the air. Blizzo, I swear, Blizzo always has the craziest warrior fears. He, he, um, he always fears like gateways and stuff. I, whenever so someone is about to kite him, he's so quick with that. He's he has really good reflexes, Blizzo. Yeah, it was nicely done. Unfortunately, still caught into the clutches of Alex snares on that Frost Mage, so he can't really move around too much right now. He is getting a little bit low. Looney's going to respond with the Iron Bark. That's going to make him tanky, also increasing Looney's healing. It's one of the most powerful abilities a Restoration Druid has to keep his team alive. And right there, uh, we did see the Frozen Orb come out of Alex, so it seems like he is playing the Concentrated Coolness this time around. Uh, I believe I saw an Ice Nova as well, so uh, Alec uh, opting for the regular build uh, in this matchup. Looney getting a drink right now, uh, just kind of preparing for the dampening, and there is the uh, Zazax Veiled Eye proc onto Blizzo. So we know for a fact that Nixie, Blizzo, and z are running it. I'm interested to see if Alec runs it. Uh, maybe that maybe actually isn't running it because a Frost Mage is kind of hard to kill in this matchup on this big map. I mean, this is basically the same matchup that we already saw earlier between Daily Feed and Method Black. The downside is that Looney doesn't have Purge. Although they get Mortal Strike effects and the Sharpened Blade that could allow them for a bursty kill. They've got decent pressure going right now, but z is also on the back foot at the same time. And Poke trying to escape to safety, being greedy, not using any Bark Skins. Doesn't want to trade that unless he's locked in a stun with two members attacking him. So he's going to get away with that for now. Dampening not having set in for probably roughly another minute or so, it feels like at this point. Both teams are kind of just poking at each other, trying to burn mana as much as possible, which means switching targets is the best way to do that against the Restoration Druid to give themselves the best position moving into Dampening. 
Point K is still getting targeted down by z -Bi. He leaps away over to Alex. So it's going to be very important that Alec is always positioned far away from Mpoike so that he can uh, use uh, Alec in order to get away with that wild charge ability. It, it's crazy how much we've seen the, the meta almost uh, homogenize itself in the EU. Like, we, we are really kind of seeing them go for the same type of strategies. NA is so different. It, it really is. When we get to the NA portion of the match, uh, matches a little bit later on in the day, in the second half of the day, I feel like there is going to be just such a definitive change. Yes. All right. We see a swap on Minpoike. Actually, used bark skin there, and that seems to be XRB's strategy: is to gun down Minpoike at at least some point in this match. They've been constantly switching their attention to him, so he's going to need to keep his eyes open. He can't get complacent, even though it's a really long, drawn-out game. You make one mistake at 40% dampening, you're gone. So let's see if Minpoike can stay laser focused. At the in the meantime, Looney's got a lot of work ahead of him. Nice tremor totem from Zipai is going to break him out of crowd control, though. Should buy him enough time to restabilize. We see another storm bolt onto Minpoike. Zipai. Waddling his way over on that enhanced Looney jumping on top of him in K2. Maybe looking for a Cyclone at low health. No Cyclone. He Alec to deny Polymorphs. Looney is using Cyclone a lot, which we don't normally see from the Druids that want to dampen. He's really kind of styling on Tempo Storm right now. Yeah, and Poike is going to have to play catch up. He has to keep himself alive in order to do that. Sometimes he has to be in bear. And I feel like XRB to the moon, they know that. They're punishing him by making sure they have pressure on it. Nixie as well, making Mpoike have to heal multiple targets, which can be difficult as the rest of Druid. A little bit of a swap over on Aluni. They actually get the bark skin out of him quite easily, but I don't really feel like Temple Storm has the classes right now to take down Looney in a big swap. Meantime, Blizzard is getting rotted down just a little bit. Which may be why Looney is trying to clone. He's baiting them to hit him. So that way, Zipai and Blizzard get a little bit more uptime. This could be a mind game that Looney's trying to implement. He knows he's more durable than his partners, and if he can bait them into attacking him, then his partners will get a kill. If they don't switch to him, then he gets Cyclones. So it's a win-win for Looney to do what he's doing aggressively, especially at this point, moving deeper into dampening, because it could force cooldowns. 20% later, that, part, that player doesn't have it, can't trade, and goes down. It just feels like the strat from XRB to the moon here is to just hit Mimpoike as the primary target here. He is the guy that they want to hit the most, but whenever they can't hit Mimpoike, whenever he's kiting like this, you can see Blizzard is just going to be turning onto Nixie, waiting for his charge or heroic to come back up and then try to connect onto Mimpoike again. And what they want to do here is just tax Mimpoike's mana as hard as possible. And with a strategy like this, I almost want to see Alec just play a super offensive build. Uh, honestly, I, I'm not even trolling here. I would like to see the Rune of Powers come out from Alec. You are completely free casting. You can do whatever you want in this matchup. The only thing you really have to worry about is a couple of wind shares. He's never really been under any like heavy fire. So why not drop that Rune of Power for that extra bit of punch on your Ray of Frost? And maybe even play the Glacial Spike for extra roots and extra annoyance. Play Frostbite. Just try Try to slow the opponent, opposing team down as much as possible because when it comes to going toe-to-toe -to -toe in terms of damage, a Frost Mage is never going to be keeping up with an Enhanced Shaman or a Warrior on that DPS meter. Yeah, it is interesting. Even with all the snares on Zipai and uh, Blizzo, it still seems like they're the ones with a little bit more pressure in this matchup so far. Blizzo actually opting to use his Trinket there. Still, Looney doing a good job with the Cyclones to slow down Alec the best he can. and. Yeah, like you said, Zico, maybe Alec could make some spec adaptations to just be more of a free casting threat in this matchup. Cyclone on him, Boyke, Stormbolt on Nixie, Zipai trying to put some pressure out on him. We're at 22% dampening, both healers relatively even. Zipai now, Tank Trick is going to be frocking. One of the scary things for Looney is if Alec is playing that Kleptomania talent, Alec can basically remove every single heal over time effect uh, that Looney puts out on a single target, and that gives uh, Temple Storm an opportunity to take someone down quite quickly. I'm just curious who they're ultimately going to go after. It would appear to be Zipai. We see a full fear and no tremor from Zipai. Must be out of range from Minpoike under fire. Actually having to trade out his trinket, and Minpoike has been in the most trouble, I would say, out of any player throughout this game. And if someone is likely to die, I think it's going to be him. Second to that, it would be Zipai, as in this situation right now. Looney is trying to restabilize, pausing it out with Iron Bark. Should give him enough stability to get back to full health. Zipai still just marching towards Minpoike. Minpoike kiting across the map. We see some cheeky hexes on Alec to try and bait Minpoike to come back and dispel. It's a nice play from Zipai. Blizzo trying to march across the map. Looney constantly going for clones, but now Alec is punishing him for the Cyclone attempts. And if he gets a counterspell, then he can initiate the Kleptomania. I think he did it in this situation, which is why Blizzo is dipping so low, but thankfully for him, 
the veiled eye is looking over him. Yeah, look at Minpoike. So he's going to get stunned up here. What he needs to do is kite to the other side of the map, and that's what he has really been doing. That gives Alec an opportunity to throw down a blizzard, throw down snares, allowing Minpoike to get away for just a little bit. But Zeepa and Blizzo still all over Minpoike. Could be in some trouble. Throws out the Iron Bark back Yikes. from Looney. A lot of damage on Minpoike. He could be in some trouble. N Nixie, he's going to leap over, try to get some peels out. Finally, some polymorphs coming in there from Alec. Zipa and Blizzle have been doing a good job to shut that down. Minpoike is still really struggling to top himself off. Gets caught into the fear. If they can reconnect, it could be very scary for this Resto Druid. I mean, he, if that happens to him, another 20% into dampening, he's dead, basically. Right now, he's caught in a storm ball with no cooldowns. This is match po or game one. Will Minpoike fall? No, he's going to catch a heal right out of the stun. He gets incapped on his jump. That was really well timed by Zipai, interrupting Minpoike's gap closer. Now he's going to have to expend, expend dash as well. He's still just getting interrupted. Right now, Minpoike is just getting destroyed. And if he keeps making these kinds of mistakes, he's going to go down. And here's a big problem. When Minpoike is under this much pressure, it forces him to kind of line of sight, not cross the map. Finally, he does get away, but when he's on a pillar like that, it's really difficult for Alex to get out the CC and pressure that he needs. Nixie's going to be chasing Blizzle, though, trying to punish for a possible overextension by him. 37% dampening. Looney might start struggling to keep Blizzle alive as they do charge across the map over on Minpoike. Minpoike is completely stabilized, has the Iron Bark, has the Trinket. As long as he doesn't throw in the situation, he should be safe for quite some time. All right, another count. Counter spell landed on Looney. These counter spells are the only window of opportunity for Tempo Storm throughout this game. If they don't get a kill during that window, when you see the blue icon next to Looney's health frame, he can't heal. He's interrupted, and that's their only real opportunity to get crowd control. It's too difficult to land polymorphs on him unless they want to commit the storm bolts. Right now, damage is starting to ramp up with both Blizzo and Zipai below half. Blizzo in a dangerous position, finally trading out Die by the Sword. That's his biggest defensive. Without that, moving into 50% dampening, he's not going to have the recovery mechanics he needs to survive. But now. And Poike is also on the back foot with both of his members oh, to be getting oh, oh, below. Oh. Nixie almost choking. He might just go down if he gives him his back. He gave Blizzo his back. He turned around and got executed. Blizzo is going to sneak away with it. XRB leading the series 1 0. That was such a cool thing when we sit down very quickly. Be curious to see how Nixie's going to play this out. Who's he going to target? He's also playing Night Elf. I don't, what is it with everyone playing Night Elf? I really just don't. I mean, well, it looks it's, it's cool, good for rogue, actually. Is it? Yes. Uh, so, for rogue specifically, you can get those restuffs and then more openers. And the reason why uh, it wasn't that good before was because first of all, human was really, really strong, and now human has been severely nerfed. And then the other thing is, since you have less stuns because they nerfed the true bearing, having that night elf restuff provides you with an extra stun for your mage to get those polymorphs out. So uh, it's, a tr it's a bit of a trade-off. Uh, the other option, if you are um, a rogue, would be either Dark Iron Dwarf or the Void Elf. Uh, Void Elf, of course, getting that extra bit of proc damage, uh, as well as some extra mobility, is always nice. Uh, and then the Dark Iron Dwarf would be good, but obviously there's not that many debuffs you can remove on exactly. the side of XRB. So in this particular matchup, you're not going to be seeing it. So I actually like the Night of here. Plus, I think it's daytime, so uh, right now he's going to be critting a little bit more. Yeah, it, it's it, like the, the main meme of the Night Elves was like when we were joking yesterday about day or night, but that's going to be relatively inconsequential compared to the Shadow Meld. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's no question about it. We can actually see some adaptations here uh, by XRB, knowing that they're going up against a rogue. Instead of playing Alliance and playing Gnome, Blizzo's now playing Horde uh, and playing Orc to reduce some of the durations of those stuns. We bet z is going to be playing the same thing. Looney gets opened up on. I feel like they don't have the damage to really punish. Maybe in the past it would have been scary. Uh, looks like the is just going to go for a Cyclone. Nixie really needs a little bit of time to sort of build up his damage on that Outlaw Rogue. I actually like that Luna's playing Relentless in this matchup because, uh, like we talked about earlier, the Blinding Powder is going to make it really difficult for you when to use your Trinket. And in Deep Dampening, eventually you are going to have to Trinket one of those Blinds. If you can stall out the game long enough to get that secondary Blind, then you're going to be able to win the game. Whereas if you're playing Relentless, it's just an overall solid choice throughout the whole game, but you are putting your teammates at risk. And it's going to be up to z and Blizzard to do a good oh. job whenever there's a Blind right there right now. That was a very question mark cyclone on Zipai by Minpoike. They got Looney in a blind and a full poly, and then Minpoike cloned Zipai and immuned all the damage. That had to have been a mistake. 
Now that entire setup is botched and they don't have blind anymore. That's going to put Tempo Storm quite behind and Z-Pi and Blizzo can start to get some work done. I'm curious if they're going to be gunning from Infoike as they did in game number one early on or if they're just happy and content attacking Nixie. Um, they look uh, pretty happy attacking Nixie. <laughs> uh, there is another thing here about Nixie. Nixie. Like Feral Affinity? Looney is playing Feral Affinity? What is this game? Uh, well, I think it's actually not that bad because I don't think Looney is going to be that easy to take down for the oh. mage. And we'll see oh. about that. <laughs> Barskin gets used. Another cheap shot comes in. Alec really not finding the damage. Grounding totem was dropped by Zipai to help out Looney in that situation. And that's one of the new things that Enhancement Trauma has is they were given grounding totem, which is huge to keep your healer alive against a mage. I mean, I guess Looney knows his team's so durable, so he's going to go for Feral Affinity, get some extra damage, and also, more importantly, bait them to attack him. So, um, one quick thing that I just noticed there was that Nixie just disarmed Blizzo, and if you look at Nixie's cooldown to the bottom right of your screen, you won't see that Plunder Armor. Uh, and it's very typical for these Outlaw Rogues uh, to trade out that Plunder Armor for the Disarm when they are against Warriors, uh, because when they're doing that big Plunder Armor setup, more often than not, they're going to be getting Storm Bolted or Disarmed themselves by the Warrior. So, uh, we saw Waz, for example, when he was playing that Outlaw Rogue in day number one, he would go for these uh, off disarm arms essentially on the warriors trying to peel him and then uh, be able to kidney shot and get that killing spree off for that big burst damage and there's looney again with the um, uh, with the feral affinity coming in with that stuff i mean i think looney's just trying to have fun <laughs> he's, just he's literally just like i'm a by. cat i'm a cat look at me go <laughs> like I, there's no way, I mean, maybe Feral Affinity is good because the, the damage is just so non-consequential before dampening, so you just get some extra damage on your healer. You get a stun, right? Well, yeah. you're a druid, Sid. What do you think? Would you go Moonkin Affinity, perhaps, in this matchup so you get that extra range on clone? I mean, the, the extra range on clone, the extra armor to be able to, to avoid... Look at this. Looney stunned. is literally just running away, re <laughs> jumping in. It's actually stunning. not that bad. It's actually kind of good. It could be impactful <laughs> later on in the game. He's just waiting to drop on a... Okay, here's an attempt from Tempo Storm where they botched it earlier with a bad Cyclone. This time, oh, nice not son. making that mistake. Zipai is forced to trade a big defensive cooldown to survive Ooh. that attack with Blind. Nixley actually used his Vanish there to follow up that Blind with a Sap. Blizzo shut it down very, very nicely. Now Nixie's basically wasted that Vanish. Looney going for a <laughs> restealth once again. And uh, we can see Temple Storm, they just don't have the consistent damage to force Looney not to do these restealths. Like, he's just being free to restealth, move I in, pounce. Like, it's a first on Nixie. Now is going to be taking a little bit of pressure. Alec dumping some damage, but he gets topped off very, very quick. I, I think Looney dies in dampening. He's playing Relentless and Feral Affinity. Like... He's memeing right now. He's trying to have some fun before dampening, but I swear it's going to cost him the game later in the match. He keeps re-stealthing. He's going to stun Nixie out of this. Yeah, he is. Throw a couple of bleeds off and then just walk back behind the pillar. But this kind of playful strategy from Looney, I think, is going to be exploited heavily by Tempo Storm. I don't know. I, I mean, with the Relentless, without Plunder on the side of Nixie, playing with Blizzo as well as z I, I, I think it's going to be a lot more difficult than it has been in the past, but he could definitely go down if Tempo Storm gets that super clean setup, maybe where they blind him and then they set up a CC on Blizzo as well as z and they get that three on one. I could definitely see it happening. It's just really hard for them to actually execute. And I guess Looney is kind of banking on the fact that his teammates will save him if he ever gets put in that situation. Yeah, Blizzo taking some damage from the Ray of Frost. Looney actually sat down for a drink, so resets his mana before dampening gets too high. And now, once again, going for that restealth. You can see him in uh, cat form. Nixie actually oh, leaps caught. over, gets caught into a stun. Do they have any damage to follow it up? Doesn't look like Alec is there, and Looney is basically going to take no damage in that setup. And Poike is actually the one that's in trouble. I feel like Zipai is the healer, and Looney's playing Feral right now. <laughs> and then Poike gets swapped to, and that's three DPS basically on him from the start of that. He's under a lot of pressure. He doesn't want to choke and go down only 10 percent to dampening but looney's all over him gets a clone at low health and looney just asserting druid dominance i mean he's playing risky talents he's always looking for these clones and he's make, basically making it look like minpoike is asleep <laughs> minpoike is still taking some damage blizzard's gonna be able to reconnect look with at the this minpoike in execute range it's a nice war storm stun coming in from looney minpoike is gonna manage to get away looney throwing out additional damage blizzard had to trink it out there and now that whole setup right there is off of the back of those clones that Looney just landed. They stun up in Poike, they get him to about 50%, and then Looney gets those two clones, resets the, the stun cooldown and the diminishing return on Poike. They manage to stun him when he's already low, forcing out his trinket. Uh, more plays like that could definitely net them a kill in the future. All right, Looney, what are you going to do? Are you going to go in stealth again, buddy? 
He's trying to, but Zipa actually getting interrupted on a hex. He's not able to heal while he's locked out. Looney's jumping in, dishing out a ferocious bite onto Nixie. We've, I don't think we've ever really seen Wrestler Druid implement Feral Druid Affinity. There's never been an opportunity you could get away with it, but with this mega dampening meta, you seem to be able to get away with it, and it seems to be very beneficial. Looney sneaking across the map to try and crowd control out of this with a bash. Alec and Nixie both at low health. Then Poike in a tough position. Nixie's trying to support him with a disarm. Great support from Nixie. Then Poike looks like he's going to be able to recover, but XRB are still gunning for him. Yep, Nixie, the enemy over Blizzo. Alec putting out some damage, nice flurry proc getting him an ice lance, but Blizzo gets topped off very, very quickly. And like, you can see the clear differences from Legion and BFA with the Outlaw Rogue and with the Frost Mage. Before, they had a lot of consistent bursts. Now these classes a little bit more control oriented than that damage. So Looney's able to, you know, breathe a little bit, get these restells, top off Blizzo quite easily, especially when you can fall back on those tank trinkets that just make your DPS very, very hard to kill. What do you think about triple DPS with multiple hybrids? Uh, it's not Cataclysm, Sid. I don't know. I feel I like don't it would know. work. I don't know. The, yeah, like after last night, too. <laughs> double I, enhanced yeah. Rhett? A double enhanced, like I feel like it would actually work. But we shouldn't talk about that right now. I mean, we shouldn't give them any ideas. Uh, uh, yeah, that's, 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 okay. Don't talk about tanks and don't talk about hybrids, okay? We're, we're, we're only Just talk about crying. DPS. I, I think I shed a tear. <laughs> uh, Cola might be watching, Bean might be watching, who knows? I, I, I still, I veiled eye, that was Bean. This, well, this is what I think about the triple hybrid is you, a lot of the time when you play triple DPS, you're looking for a very high pressure situation, right? You're giving up a lot of healing to do additional damage. But I think how tanky everyone is, having three DPS doesn't actually necessarily just net you a kill. With Resto Druid healing and Resto Shaman healing, you easily heal through that three DPS pressure. Yeah, it might just be more annoying. Like, it might just make it to dampening, but never actually have a kill window. I, that, that's actually, that makes a lot of sense. All right, Blizzo has just been soloing. This guy won't be done. He's just been soloing. I'm 1400. Right? <laughs> 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 All right, Ludi finally maybe going to get punished for this Feral Druid affinity. We're almost at a critical mass in dampening. Nixie has killing spree. Alec has icy veins. They're just waiting, saving it up, building all of it up for a massive punch. And with Relentless from Looney, that could easily be exploited. They've been decent pressure on Z-Pi. Blizzo still charging over. Nixie's going to stun Blizzo. Mpoike jumps to Alec to safety. And I'm curious if you want to take some bets on dampening at this point. Yeah. Uh, my guess is going to be 58% XRB wins. Uh, but I, I want to just quickly highlight, uh, we got two win conditions so far that seem apparent. It seems to me like what Nixie and Alec are trying to do is blind up Looney and take down Blizzo in that one and a half minute CD blind sap chain. Uh, and then it seems to me like what uh, XRB are trying to do here is to uh, do these Stormbolt swaps here like we see right now onto Mimpoike and try to slowly wither him down with that dampening uh -oh. and whenever they can oh there we go there's the blind sap yeah, blind sap over on the loony stun over on the blizzo trinket does proc so he should be okay but they managed to pull out that cooldown but i don't know if it's the best trade for blind uh now a full cyclone over on the blizzo 35 percent dampening loony still be able to top off blizzo quite easily there's a wind shear over on him and toike nixie caught into the stun he uses the adrenaline rush this could potentially be a very high dampening game maybe breaking the rector record of 63 percent set by temple storm a little bit earlier another swap over on him and poike xrb to the moon looking to get very aggressive yeah, he doesn't have barks and gets caught into a cap toad and blizzo is he by both on top of him looney jumping into the action as well he can go cat farm get some extra damage for uh -oh. his team and poike struggling to deal with that ursul's vortex was perfect he managed to squeak out a line of sight but dampening is so high look at these regrowths they're not even doing anything to min poike's health he's gonna try and kite but he ran in line of sight of blizzo he's gonna jump to alec and try and get to safety z has been chopping up nixie in the meantime taking a ton of damage i've seen this happen already he's gonna go down without trading repost and this constantly happens they play to get the dampening and they just don't press buttons this, yeah this is what i wanted to talk about this is something we i will straight up say no but zico could you explain to them what has caused bfa at, at its at its birth to be a little bit tankier well first of all the rest of druid healing to especially to mana ratio is really really crazy good uh all of these team, all of these games that are going to super far dampening has either a Resto Druid or a Resto Shaman in them. You're not going to see a Priest versus a Paladin go to 50% dampening. It's just not going to happen. And that is one of the big reasons. The other big reason is, of course, uh, hybrid classes such as the Enhancement Shaman that Zephyr is playing. They have 
not only just instant healing, but their instant healing is doing crazy amounts of healing. I mean, Feral Druids can crit 50, 60k with that Swiftman, which is essentially a half HP bar. Word of Glory is healing for 60, 70k, which is also an instant AoE heal from a Red Paladin. Uh, these numbers are not... You know, it's not that uncommon that we see those big uh, hybrid healing crits, essentially. And a lot of them are instant casts as well. Then you add in the tank trinkets, the uh, Zavax Veiled Eye into that equation. And all of a sudden, you are breaking new records, uh, longest games, longest series, highest dampening, you name it. It's one for the history book. We, are, we already have seen the longest dampening game in BFA. And longest uh, series and shortest as well. Yeah, yeah. So we've seen everything. And I think we're going to see some of those. You know, you mentioned Priest and you mentioned Pat Paladin. We don't expect to see those until we get back to NA. Once we get to NA, oh, yeah. the gloves are coming off. I miss NA. <laughs> I love you, NA. <laughs> so, Zico, so, Zico, <laughs> Zico has finally come around. He's been on the desk. One of us. <laughs> what is <laughs> NA better than EU at? Having fun. <laughs> Taking damage. Yeah, that's true. Healing <laughs> damage, trill, highest damage dealt. Oh, two yes. NA players. Two NA players. That, that's what you guys have to remember. When we talk about the, that they do more DPS, they're doing more DPS, but on targets that are from NA. That's what we have to keep in mind here. Trill did 11k what, what DPS that mean, yesterday. Zika? It means that the European players don't take damage. I mean, just just look at Alec right now. Do, do you think he's going to take 11k DPS? There's no way. Just look at him. He's hugging that pillar. Every time he uses a global, he dips behind that pillar. He, he's going to get targeted by 20% of the, of the damage that someone in NA is going to take. He just blinked in. <laughs> just, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Come on, about. Alec, man. You're supposed to be on my side here. We're dark game brothers. <laughs> That's uh, fun. A nice little swap over on him in Poike. This is where XRB to the moon has really found Ooh. their so far. Vortex! Oh, oh, my oh my goodness. I was going to say, XRB to the moon, they found the pressure point. And Poike getting swapped to DR Bash coming in from the feed versus the fake Zebras. We're all tied up. One and one. Who is going to find themselves on match point? Who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament? Keep in mind, folks, we're doing a brand new thing. You have just entered in the middle of history the longest series that has ever been played in Battle for Azeroth.